Hey guys, it's Christy with Christy's Custom Creations, and today I'm going to be showing you how my husband built these single cup cup turners. A lot of people have had questions about my large cup turner, and he actually used the same process to make my large cup turner as he did this single cup turner. So he started off with a one by six board that he measured to be 15 inches long. And then he took a tape measure and measured six inches from one side and marked a straight line. And he did that on both sides of the board so that there was a straight line in the exact same spot on both sides of the board. He then put four small little X's alongside the line so that he knows where to put nails in it later on down the road. These little pieces here, he cut to be five and a half inches tall by six inches and they're also from a one by six board. So as you can see, he's already pre-drilled holes into these five and a half by six inch boards and the larger hole is an inch and an eighth and he, he drilled that with a hole saw. The smaller hole is a half inch hole and he drilled that one with a drill bit. You'll actually see later on in the video, we decided to make that hole, the half inch hole, just slightly bigger. So we're gonna line this first board up and you want it to line up right on the inside, the smaller side where we drew that line down the board. So it's gonna line up just on the inside of it and then that's where we're going to attach it to the board. And this is what the inch and an eighth hole saw looks like. This piece is the chuck that goes into the hole saw. And from there you attach it to the drill and then you drill down into the wood, creating your perfect hole in the wood. So on both of these boards here, he measured two and three corners from the outside of the board to the center of the hole and then one inch from the top down to the center of the hole. And that centered them both up perfectly with each other. So they are, like I said, two and three quarter inch from the side to the center of the hole. And then one inch from the top down to the center of the hole. So now we are going to attach these two smaller boards to our Turner base. You want to line the board up on the inside which would be the smaller portion of the line on our board here. So here we are showing a turner that he's already partially put together and when he takes a tape measure to it, it is going to be exactly six inches from the back of the turner to the front of the board. Okay, so now I'm basically just going to reiterate what I said earlier and show you that the center of the hole is going to line up exactly two and three quarter inches. And then the center of the hole from the top is going to line up at exactly one inch. Okay, so now it is time to put our turner together. And for this, he likes to use Type Bond 2 wood glue. He also uses 16 gauge two inch straight nails, and he uses those with a nail gun.
Okay, so he is now going to take a very thin line of our wood glue here, our tight bond to wood glue, and put it alongside the bottom of our board that has the larger hole in it. And like I said before, we're gonna line it up just on the inside of the line that we drew at the beginning of the video. Once you get your board lined up perfectly, you can take a clamp and clamp it down and make sure that it doesn't move so that we can get the nails in it. Okay, so now he's going to take his nail gun and he is going to, right there on those X's that we drew earlier, he's gonna put four nails into the bottom of it so that the nails shoot up into the piece, the wooden piece that we just glued down so that it keeps it nice and secure. And I wanna note that he put two nails in it real quick just to hold it into place. Then he took the clamp off. Once he got it held well with the two nails, he went ahead and put the last two in there. Now we are going to do the exact same process for the board in the back. We are going to take a very thin line of our wood glue and get it into place on the board, on the bottom board. He is going to once again clamp it into place like he did before. And when he has a little bit of the excess glue spill out from where he put it, uh, put it together, he, he just takes his finger, wipes off that excess glue and then wipes it off onto a rag. So now he's going to take his nail gun again and pop a couple of these uh, two, two inch nails into there. Now that it is held in place by the nails, he's gonna take the clamp off and he will put the other two nails into our turner here. Okay, now we have the base for our turner built and it is nice and sturdy. You can see the nails here. And it's ready to have the motors put on. For this part, we are going to use one three quarter inch slip on and threaded adapter. It's a male adapter. We are also going to use a three quarter inch plug and we are also going to use two three quarter inch slip on female adapters. This is the Turner motor and I actually purchased the Turner motor on Amazon. I will put a link down in the description box below of where you can find the Turner motors on Amazon. And I also want to mention that all the rest of the parts that we found on here, he pretty much purchased at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can find most of that stuff there. So a really quick demonstration of how he's going to attach this uh, PVC plug to the motor is he's going to drill a hole down into this PVC plug and it will actually screw into the little arm that sticks out from the motor. Okay, so now we are going to attach this piece here to the motor and it comes with two little black screws. 
and you're basically going to take the two little black screws get them into place and line the holes up on either side and then you'll use an allen wrench to screw the tiny black screws into place securing them and the motor actually came with the allen wrench so it makes it easier you don't have to go hunt the right size So this part here is pretty much a repeat of the previous clip. Uh, it's just another night. He built numerous turners for me for an event that I was having. So I just wanted to demonstrate how he put it together with Loctite. He used just a little bit of Loctite because the way that this motor is going to be put into the base of the uh, turner, it's not going to really be able to be removed easily to tighten the screws if necessary. So he wanted to use some Loctite to make sure that the, the screws were very secured in there and that they wouldn't ever try to back out. So as I mentioned previously, the hole for the half inch, um, for the, the smaller hole back here, it was a little bit too snug. So he took his half inch drill bit and he just kind of like bored it out just a little bit more, moved it around in there, bored it out to loosen the hole up just a little. Uh, so now we're going to take our motor that is put together, put it through the hole and put a screw on either side, securing it to the board on the back. Okay, so now he is going to take a 964 drill bit and we are going to drill into the cap, the three quarter inch uh, PVC cap that is going to attach our PVC arm to our motor. So just drilling a neat little hole right there in the very center of the cap. So next he took these 70 by 12 metric screws and that is what we are going to use to screw the PVC cap onto the little motor arm right there. And for this step, he went ahead and started that screw into the PVC cap so that we could easily get it into the motor arm. He also used some Loctite here because as I said before, it's going to be really difficult to try to fix it if a screw was ever to back out once this motor is completely put together so he went ahead and used a little bit of Loctite just to secure it and make sure that it was never going anywhere. And now that he's got it screwed onto the motor arm he's just going to take a screwdriver and hand screw it into place. After that, we're going to take a three quarter inch slip on female adapter and screw it onto our plug there. You want to be sure to get this part here on really tight because you don't want it going anywhere either. Okay, so now we take our three quarter inch piece of PVC pipe and we're just gonna 
try to figure out how long we want to make it. So <laughs> the PVC was quite long, so I kind of wanted to tilt a little bit. Um, but we don't we don't need this part very long. We just want it long enough to where it it sticks through the hole, and then we can attach our male adapter to it. We ended up cutting this piece right at five and a half inches long. Next, we are going to take our PVC glue and we are going to put a tiny little bit of glue. You don't, you don't need too much. Uh, we're gonna take our PVC glue, put it inside our female adapter there, and then we're gonna put our PVC through it, put a little bit on our PVC pipe and stick it in there. Next, we are going to take our three quarter inch male PVC adapter and we're going to put a small amount of PVC glue there on our PVC pipe and slip that one on. Just secure it into place. Any excess glue you want to wipe away. Okay, so now it is time to hook our turner motor up to a power cord. He just took some wire cutters and shortened the cord up a little bit. We don't need it to be quite so long. Next, he's going to take his wire cutters and he's going to strip the bottom portion of the wire about a half inch or so, just exposing the metal wire inside. Next, we are going to take a lamp cord that he purchased at Lowe's and we're going to stretch it all out and he's going to get rid of the bulb socket that is down here on the end. This little black thing down here. We're just going to cut it off. Okay, so here on the lamp wire, you've got two two wires that run down it and you want to pull the two apart so he just he took his knife and cut just a tiny bit on the end between the two just to get them going and then he he pulled them and stretched them out from there so he's next going to take his wire stripper wire cutter and he's going to strip the the rubber part off of the wire and he's just going to twist them together make sure that they're they're good and tight together he's now going to take these wire nuts and we're going to use them to wire our turner motor to our lamp cord. So for this part, we're just going to take the two wires, uh, one wire from the lamp cord, one wire from the motor, and twist them together and take the wire nut here and just twist it onto the end and it's going to secure those two wires together. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Just take the two wires, twist the metal parts together. We'll take the wire nut then and twist it down onto the two exposed wires and wire them together, uh, securing them. He then took a porter cable staple gun and we are going to use the staple gun to secure the wires to the back of the turner. We don't want them just flopping around. It could cause them to come apart, which we definitely don't want. So first he's going to secure this blue wire from the motor to the back of the turner. And then he's going to secure the lamp cord to the back of the turner here with the staple gun. All right, so when we plug it in and test it, you can see that the motor turns. Uh, one thing to note with this is when you switch the motor off and you turn it back on, it's going to turn the opposite direction. 
Okay, so it is now time to make our PVC football arms to hold our tumblers onto the turner. And he made each of our PVC arms six and a half inches long. And we made numerous different PVC arms. I like to use both the big footballs and the small footballs from the Dollar Tree. I use the smaller footballs for my smaller tumblers, obviously, and then my bigger footballs for my bigger 30 ounce tumblers. This is the smaller football from the Dollar Tree and it's got this little ending in it. So all you have to do to remove it is just twist it out just like you did here in the video. And then we've got the bigger football here. So his pocket knife is super sharp at the moment. So he just used his pocket knife to cut the end off this football. You can also use any kind of like little saw, anything that's gonna just cut through the football foam pretty easily and just cut the tip off. So for this part here, we were trying to determine exactly how long we wanted to make our PVC arms. This is the point when we decided on six and a half inches for them. But basically, we just put the female PVC adapter on there and then put the three quarter inch PVC in it and just kind of kind of tried to figure out how long we wanted it to be for the area that we were working with. Now that we have determined that we are going to have our PVC arms at six and a half inches, we're going to take our female adapter off and we're going to take a little bit of PVC glue here, put it onto our PVC arm and then slide it into our female adapter. And be sure when you do this not to use too much PVC glue because you don't want any PVC glue getting down into the threads of your arm here because you're turner arm uh, if you do it's going to mess the threads up and you're not going to be able to get it on and off of your turner all right so we are going to break out our hole saw kit again and we are going to take our inch and an eighth hole saw and we are going to use it to drill into the football creating a hole for our pvc to go and this is the same size hole saw that we used earlier to drill the larger hole in the turner for the turner arm Okay, so now we're going to take our footballs and you want to try to line it up as straight as you can because if you have it in there at any kind of crazy angles, it can make your football sit crazy on the PVC and it just it doesn't sit straight. So you want you want to go down about the same length as the hole saw and just drill a hole into the football and then you can take your finger, stick it in there in the football, just kind of bore the hole out with your finger and pull the piece that you just drilled out of there making a nice neat little hole in your football. Okay, so to attach our turner arm to the football, just run it under some water, get it wet, and then squeeze out any excess water that's hanging out in there. You just, you want it to be pretty damp. And then we're gonna take some Gorilla Glue and just coat it really well inside with the Gorilla Glue. This Gorilla Glue here is uh, moisture activated and with the moisture it, with the wetness that we, the water we put inside the football, it helps to activate it and it kind of foams up on the ends, which really helps it adhere to that PVC arm. Now that we've got a good coating in there, 
we're going to put our PVC arm in and you want it to sit upright to dry. We're going to go ahead and put a thin line of the Gorilla Glue around the outside of the football right where it meets the uh, PVC pipe just so that it helps, helps it stick to it even more. And we are going to do the exact same process for the smaller football. I do want to mention that the way he made this turner here, it is very similar. It's almost the exact same way that he made my larger turner. And you can actually, you can check out my video of my larger turner. It's a, a workbench from Harbor Freight. And it's it's the same process that he used to attach the, the PVC to the turner motor and everything. So... If you had any, a lot of people had questions about how he kind of attached everything and put it all together. So I hope that this kind of helps answer some of those questions that everyone had. Okay, that is pretty much all there is to building a cup turner and the football turner attachment arms that go to it. And as you can see here, it's just a very simple setup, but it works. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also be sure to join our Facebook group community. It's called Tumblr's Epoxy Pins and Mores Tutorials and Tips by KCC, and I have that link down in the description box below. Also, any products that I use to make my tumblers, turners, anything like that, I have linked down in the description box below as well, so be sure to check them out. I hope y'all have a great day. Y'all take care. Bye.